What's up YouTube, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we are very quickly going to discuss a subject which I think is overlooked when it comes to plastering, and that is planning your sets. Yes, if you plan your sets correctly, not only will you get a much better finish, overall it'll make your life so much easier. So in this video, we're just very quickly going to look at the things that you should look at in your sets when you're plastering your room or whatever it may be that you're skimming just to make your life a bit easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the room that I am plastering right now. I'm going to show you why I plastered certain walls first and why I plastered uh, the other walls I've left. They're going to be done second. So let's have a very quick look at the room we're in. So you can see here that I have plastered these two sections here and I have left under there and around there. Now you might be thinking, a bit weird, why did you choose those walls? Well, let me show you. So firstly, this wall here, why did I skim this wall and not this one? Well, quite simply, I've got a tiny little sliver going down the door frame here. Now, it's too small for me I to get a corner trowel in here. Um, so really, I need to plaster one side and then the other side. I've got a dry corner to work with. That way I can get it nice and straight. Now you might be thinking, okay, so why did you choose this one and not the one behind me? Again, there is a good reason for it, let me show you. Now, on this wall here, you'll notice here the uh, homeowner they stripped the paper off, now I've just turned up, um, and I saw that they have actually ripped off uh, some of the plaster. Now, this is really common when you're using a steamer. You steam it a bit too much, it lifts the plaster off. Now, this has gone straight back to the sand and cement scratch coat. Now I know that if I apply this uh, whole wall as one coat, um, this section here is going to pull in really fast. So what I'm actually going to do once I've applied the second coat on the walls is a little bit of leftover gear. I'm just going to fill that in. Now the reason being is that bit of plaster will then take, uh, take out all the suction on this uh, section here. Now it will probably craze and what have you, but when it then comes to applying the first and second cup of the second set, um, all of the suction's been taken out, so it'll actually plaster an awful lot easier because I filled it out with skim on the set before. So what then of the window wall? Now normally, um, certainly you try and look at doing your reveals and what have you on the first coat, so why have I left these? Well, again, I turned up on the job and I see that the, we the homeowner has stripped off uh, the trims against the windows and actually left with some really large gaps around the windows um, and there's nothing actually uh, for me to skim to. So I've got to find some way of filling those in. Now as a little bit of a pro tip here, now you can see potentially in the video, possibly in the video, um, there's just a massive gap, it's nearly an inch and there's literally nothing there, it goes right back into the cavity. So what I've actually done is I've actually scrimmed right round on the corner here and lift it over the window. Now what I'm actually going to do now um, on the uh, first coat and on the second coat is I'll put a really tight coat of plaster over the scrim up to the window. It looks like this. So it looks like this, so this has just had a, a really tight coat just smeared into the scrim tape. And now what that'll do is because it's on so tight that'll actually dry quite fast and then after I've applied that second coat um, on the walls I've already put on, I'll do it again. And then by the time I'm doing my second set, this would have gone right off, so that gap would have been filled in, and then I can skim those reveals in. And then once it's all finished, what I'll do is I'll actually cut the screw tape back off the window, and that'll mean that that gap will just be bridged. Now obviously in an ideal world, really what you wanna do is squirt some foam in there, let it go off, cut it back, and then put a bit of bonding in there. Um, I don't have any foam, I don't have any bonding with me. Um, I say I just turned up and I saw they were stripped off. Now probably the homeowner will probably retrim these, um, but even just aesthetically it looks better if you can fill those gaps in. So that's why this section here has been left. Now lastly, this section here, now I've plastered inside this alcove here, but I've left the top here and the side. Now you might be thinking, again, why don't you just skim the whole off? Well, quite simply, 
Um, it probably isn't showing on the camera, but this section here is actually really wavy. Now, if I was to plaster both, plaster both of these sides, it's actually a lot harder to get it straight when you're doing a wet corner because um, certainly in areas over here where it's really low, it's going to be really, really thick. So what I actually want to do is want to plaster one side, let it go off, and then plaster the other side, and it's a lot easier to see where it's straight. Same with this here. Uh, this corner was actually pretty badly damaged. The homeowner's done his best to uh, repair it. Uh, but there's probably a good five, six mil gap behind this bead, uh, which I'm gonna have to fill out. Now, um, if I was to skim this first, what actually ends up happening is it ends up twisting the bead. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do is do the face first, which is what I've done. That will go off and that will actually hold the bead in place. So when I come to plaster this side, the bead's nice and firm and I haven't got to worry about it twisting. So there you have it, not an awful lot to it, but actually when you then um, go through and I'm telling the reasons why I've plastered each of those walls, there is a reason for it. So, so important and certainly it's so easily overlooked to plan your sets. It's so tempting to turn up on a job and think, oh, do you know what, I'll smash four or five, six bags on in a set do a massive first set and then do a tiny one after. Whereas actually, if you really just take a second, think about what you're plastering, the difficult areas, and plan your sets, it'll make your day an awful lot easier, it makes it go quicker, and you'll actually be able to do a nicer job overall for the homeowner or the builder, whoever it is you're plastering for. So we hope this video has been helpful. Consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.